Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join us for tonight's STEAM time activity. We're going to have a lot of fun today, so get settled in. Uh, if you've already had a chance to get your supplies, you can craft right along with us. Otherwise, we will uh, have this posted on our YouTube afterwards, so you can catch up with us, watch it live now, and then uh, do the activity at your own pace afterwards, whichever. My name is Lisa. I'm with the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library, and I'm joined today by my pal, Ms. Shannon. Ms. Shannon's going to be keeping an eye on the question box for me during the program to let me know if there's any questions that come up as we go along. So, so without further ado, we are going to look at our program today. So today we are going to be making mini planetariums. So we got to ask ourselves first, what's a planetarium? Well, a planetarium, something we might learn about in a minute that will show us a constellation. So what's a constellation? We'll have to look at that definition. So we'll look at those two words and what they mean, and then we will do our crafting activity to learn all about it. So first up, planetarium, what is it? So a planetarium is going to be an instrument or a device or a gadget and it's going to project a picture of the stars on a wall or a dome, and it's gonna let you see what the sky looks like at any point on Earth right above you inside of a room. So you might not have to go to the top of a cold, cold mountain to uh, look through an actual telescope or look at the sky with binoculars. You could do it inside where it's nice and cozy, and you could be looking at anywhere on Earth instead of just what's right above you. So it's gonna take that and project it, like you might see a projector at a movie theater. And it's gonna project that light uh, and show all those points of stars. So it's gonna show us where the stars are and might show us, depending on how, how it's set up, uh, it might show us planets or other things in the night sky. So different planetariums have different programs in there that I'll show you the different layouts. Ours is going to be much, much simpler. We're just going to pick a single constellation to look at. But constellation, speaking of, what is that? So constellation is going to be a group of stars. It's going to be the stars are going to show up as points. And when you connect the dots of those points, it's going to make a picture. So it's like a connect the dot in the sky that's going to help us remember which star is which by looking for the picture that it makes. So people have been doing this for hundreds of thousands of years. For as long as there have been people, people have been looking up at the sky and wondering what's going on up there. And for a very, very long time, people have been making, uh, having ideas about what those different dots mean and the stories that they could tell. So planetariums are going to show us constellations and constellations are groups of stars making a picture. All right, so we have our definition set up. We know what our words are. We're going to jump right into the crafting part of the activity. Let me turn on my other camera here. So that you can see my materials that I have laid out here. So if you had a chance to uh, download the activity sheet, I will give you the link for that if you have not. Uh, but the activity sheet, if you print it out, We'll let you have a couple of pre-made constellations that you can punch out. Let's see if I have a link here. Bear with me, I'm gonna click over to a different screen to see where my link is. Here we go. So don't mind me, I'm going to copy and paste this into our chat box for you. So that is the link that you can use to download the activity. And I also have it as a handout in your GoToWebinar menu. I know some folks have a different version of GoToWebinar depending on if you're on a, on a mobile device or not, so you may or may not be able to see the downloadable handout. So if you can't see the downloadable handout that's in the handout section of GoToWebinar, click on that link in the chat box uh, after the program. You'll be able to download the worksheet for that. So back to the supplies, we need our cardboard cylinder. So that's just going to be like an oatmeal container or 
grits, container, any kind of round cardboard. But if you have your nice steel cut oats, some of those have a metal bottom. So those aren't gonna be as good. You want the ones that are cardboard bottom, it's cardboard sides. And then you need a lid like this one that you can cut out. I've already gotten a head start on that and I cut that out for us. because We're gonna replace this with our constellation. Let me go ahead and turn my camera off real quick. And I'm going to turn my screen sharing off with the instructions on it so that you can have a bigger view of the actual activity. All right. So you've got your cardboard tube here. You just pop your lid off. And if you're a bigger kid, you might be able to cut this yourself. Otherwise, make sure you have a grown up help you. But all you do is you poke a little bit of the edge with your scissors, and then you just cut all the way around to cut out the cardboard part of the lid. Once you have that out, you can either cut out one of these pre-made constellations that I, that I put together for you, or you can just take some construction paper or even, heck, junk mail would work great too. And you're just gonna trace that. You can either trace the lid or trace the bottom of your roll there. Once you have your circle traced out there, you wanna mark out your constellation. There's two ways that you can do that. If you have something that's traceable, you could lay that on top of there and maybe carefully poke that through and mark out your constellation that way where you can see the dots that were put through from that. Or if you're very, very good at seeing your distances and freehanding it, you could freehand it and mark out your dots. I'm not so good at it, like you can see here, I am not great at eyeballing those distances. So I will cut mine out. So again, I already got a little bit of a head start. Couldn't help myself, I started early. And I've cut out Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is one of my favorite constellations. It's always really easy to find with that big W shape that the stars make. So each of these dots is gonna represent a star. And if you have a hole punch like this, you can just go right around and punch out the dots where the stars are. But if you don't have a hole punch, that's totally fine, easy peasy. You're gonna make sure your work surface is protected and you put your pencil or your pen down and you're just gonna poke that hole through with your pencil or your pen. Just make sure that you have something under your work surface so you don't ruin your table. Make sure that your fingers are not underneath where you're poking through. So that's two ways that you can make your holes. If you find that you're using the hole punch and it's just a little bit too far inside, you can just kind of fold that a little bit because it's okay if it gets a little bit wrinkly. You can just reach through like that and then unfold it again. It's fine if it gets wrinkled, it won't bother anything. But once you have your holes all punched out, almost missed one. You're just gonna take that constellation and you're going to fit it inside of this lid. There we go. So if it's a little bit too snug and it's not fitting in, you just cut a little bit extra around the edges until it fits. If you're doing construction paper or junk mail or whatever, maybe you don't have uh, scissors that are sharp enough, you could always 
just fold around the edges like this. Because it doesn't have to be a very clean cut around the edges. We don't care how nice the edge looks on this one. Just smush it down, keep folding it around. Until you have it like that. And then you can just carefully tear off that extra. Just like that. I know sometimes I have a little bit of a hard time using scissors. They can be a little bit tricky if you have maybe a problem with fine motor control, or if you just have fingers are a little bit stiff from working on other crafts that day. You don't have to use scissors for it. You can just tear it like that. And then if you've got your constellations already booped, very technical term there, I booped the constellation in. <laughs> that was a very lopsided Big Dipper there. But that's okay. Once you have all those holes poked out, you do the same as you did with the other one. Oops, I made it a little bit too big. I'm just going to trim it down a little bit more. Use my fingers to pinch off the edge here a little bit, fold it up a little bit. There we go. And then it'll fit in. So once you have it in there, just make sure that your holes are all the way open so that we can let that light through. And then you're thinking, well, what am I going to do with this now? Well, in the bottom here, you're going to make a hole that's just big enough for your flashlight to fit in. So you don't have to use any fancy tools. You're just going to, uh, you or your adult will just very carefully use your scissors to poke a little bit of a hole in there. And once you have a little hole started, you can just snip through like that. And then snip like that and snip your X into there. So this also doesn't need to be a perfect fancy cutting job. We're just going to fold it in here so that it's just big enough for our flashlight when we turn it on to fit through. So it's almost big enough. There we go. So once you have that big enough, you can see there's a lot of light coming through. And if we put our constellation lid on, so I'll see if we can line that up with the camera. So just like that. Now, it won't show up very well because with the camera and the light, we can't get it very, very dark in here. But if you look down on the work surface there, I can line that up a little bit better where you can see it. Do you see those points of light coming through? Yeah. Yep, we can see them. It looks fantastic. Good. All right, so that is our improvised Big Dipper constellation showing up there. Yeah, like I said, it's a little bit tricky to get it to show up on camera because cameras need light and if I turn all the light off you won't see anything. We, we don't have a HD TV studio cameras. But yeah, so you could see how that works with our improvised constellation there. So whether you have scissors or hole punch Whichever tools you have, there are a bunch of different ways to make this. And if you're going to be using something just to poke your holes, you don't even necessarily have to cut your lid out of that. If you're good at really good at drawing and you think maybe you can make your own constellation, you could try that too and see if you can just poke the holes through into the lid itself.
I'm not great at freehand artwork, so I rely on these templates for it instead. So you can print those out. You can find your own uh, online or at the library and trace them and then make your activity that way. So that is our mini planetarium. The fun part about this is there are so many constellations to choose from that you could make a whole bunch of them. If you don't have a, an oatmeal container, this also works if you do it with like a paper towel roll. Paper towel roll works fine for this. You're just gonna have to make a much smaller uh, constellation picture to, to poke out. All right, well, while y'all are working that, think of those good questions. We are going to talk a little bit about some other fun stuff that you can get from the library. So I don't know if you knew this, but one of my favorite things that you can get at the library other than books is what we call realia or uh, 3D models and educational tools. And this is really fun because we can make our DIY planetarium. We can make that, that's fun. But you could actually check out a whole big giant telescope from the library to take home and use for a little while. So if there's something fun coming up that you want to observe in the night sky, maybe put a hold on one of those telescopes and you can check those out, take them home, set those up and, and watch your, your nighttime sky activity. Maybe look for some of these constellations or planets up in the sky. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. There's a whole bunch of different things. It's not just uh, telescopes, there's microscopes, there's scientific models. So Maybe you're in a biology class and you're learning about plant cells. They have a whole big 3D model of a plant cell that you can take home, take apart, put together and learn the different parts of. There's games and activities that you can check out that way. So go to hcplc.org slash books slash realia or scan that QR code that I have up on the screen there. That'll take you to the page that tells you all about how that works, uh, which libraries have it, how you can check that out and take that home and have fun with it. I love it, it's one of my favorite things, so. Oh, sorry, yeah. one question. The link doesn't appear to be working. Um, and what constellation is the diamond constellation? Ah, the diamond constellation, this one here, I'm guessing you're, you're talking about here, right? So this diamond constellation is a small section of a bigger constellation called Hydra. If you're looking at the, uh, the Greek constellations or the Latin constellations, uh, but in Chinese uh, astronomy, it is known as the extended fishing net. So instead of seeing the constellation Hydra, when people were first coming up with constellations in China, many, 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 many years ago, they saw a big fishing net. You can see that, how if the net was stretched out to throw out into the water, how it would be stretched out like that. I think that's a pretty neat one. I have a question, Lisa. Will it work with the different lights? I know that the, the best light to use will probably be white lights, but what if someone wanted to use color lights? Would that be uh, also as effective or maybe not? So yes and no. Different colors of lights have different wavelengths. And so some of those are going to be a lot easier to see. So I can maybe even show you with this one. I have a red light on this flashlight because this is a flashlight that I use when I do astronomy outside at night. So the red light is one that won't affect your night vision. So if you're out with your telescope, it's nice to have that. But let's see if we can show that on here. Let's see if I can show you the, the difference on that, what that looks like on this view. All right, so we've got the white light there. Oops, get out of the camera view. But if I change it over to the red light, you see it's really hard to see. You can't, you can hardly see the red light. So it's just as strong, but the different wavelength means that it makes it a little bit harder to see when there's other light around. So if it was absolutely, absolutely dark, like you were in a very, very dark room or, or a 
covered or something, or you're outside and there was no moon, if you were using that red light, it would show up, but it wouldn't be as easy to see. Right. But yes, you can use a colored flashlight, but it's harder to see than if you just use a regular um, white light flashlight. Now it looks like the handout section is working now. Perfect. So yeah, I can send out the, I can send that link to the downloadable after the, the uh, class as well. So that's not a problem if anybody else has trouble with it. So yeah, questions. How have you been following along with the activity? Do you think you're going to make it? Do you have any questions about the, the words that we used or any of the tools that we used? Let us know. We've got just another minute or two here. So all right. Well, if you think of a question afterwards, that's not a problem. We're here all the time. You can always reach us at hcplc.org slash contact. That page has all of our contact information, including our phone number, 813-273-3652. But it also has our really neat Ask a Librarian function. With Ask a Librarian, you can either chat or text or email with one of our local Hillsborough librarians uh, when, whenever the library is open. Uh, if they get your questions after hours, they, they can get back to you another time. But yeah, while the library is open, if you don't want to call us, that's fine. You can text us through that. And if you want more Steam Time activities or more uh, content like this, you can find more live programs at, in your branches online at hcplc.org slash events. And we have another Steam Time coming up. Our next Steam Time program is going to be on February 14th. And we are going to be making some pressed flowers. We're going to do a little botany sleuthing, learn about flowers and, and how they used to be preserved for, for scientific study by pressing them. And we'll, we'll do that activity and we'll make a little nice, nice little craft for someone that we uh, maybe in whose company we maybe enjoy for February 14th. I don't know, it just kind of seemed like a good idea to show somebody how much I, I love them. So we hope you can join us February 14th for that. We'll be making our pressed flowers at six o'clock. But there's tons of other programs on there for, for uh, scientific-minded people of all ages. Uh, we also have our tech topics every month, so check those out. And we have our new Spotlight series. We're reading spotlights on digital resources that we have at the library, so check those out as well. All right, folks, remember there's a survey that goes out after each one of these programs where you can let us know how we did, um, give us uh, suggestions for things you'd like to see us do in the future. We always love to make content specifically for you, so let us know what you want to see. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions that you think of then, share them in the survey. We'll get back to you that way. I'm glad you could join us. Ms. Shannon, thank you for helping keep an eye on those questions for me. Thank and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Bye, folks.